Hello and welcome. I am, of course, the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B, but together we are... Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Dude, we seem to have some sort of starter box set here. We do, we which do. Which is literally it, bulging. It is, it is literally bulging. It bulges. Probably don't want to compress it. But don't it is not it. Battle of the Bulge. No, no, no. No, it is not. It is so... Clash Steel World War II start set. This is the late war start. This the really late war start set. And there's a few interesting surprises in it. It was released a couple of months ago. We mm. haven't got around to reviewing it. But I have already opened one. And I have a You've part, a best part, of part it. painted. Um, out here, and we can show you the models as we go. Do you want to? Do you want to tell them what's in it, John? Um, a lot of things, guys. Mm. A lot of things. So this box contains two complete forces. Didn't you know? The German side of things, you have a Company HQ, which is a Panther late. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a tank platoon of two Panthers late again. You have a tank hunter platoon, which are two Panzer fours with a seventy whatever. The that Panzer four L seventy. It's a Jag Panzer. A Jag Panzer. Yeah. Ouch. Uh, a heavy tank hunter platoon, which is one Jag Tiger. One Jag Tiger. Ouch. That was a real surprise to find in this set. <laughs> Uh, you also get an infantry platoon, which is uh, a Panzer Grenadier platoon of 27 figures. Indeed you do. Um, Soviet side of things. Also get some big tanks. What you're up against. These are beasts in These are here. big tanks. Uh, the battalion HQ of one T-34. Then you get a tank Check. company of three T-34s. Check. Heavy tank company of two IS-2s. IS-2s, mate. Oosh. Assault gun company of two ISU-122s. They're big as well. Um, massive assault guns. And the best thing ever, you get an armoured car company of three BA-64s. <laughs> and they don't even have medium machine guns, they have a just bit of like a light, they have a light machine gun. Is it just a pistol poked through the... You do have the option for an anti-tank rifle, I think. Or let's crack this up. No, whoa, 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 oh, whoa, 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 oh, whoa. Sorry. Don't man. forget the Heroes, my friend. Heroes. Which is the uh, motor rifle company of 35 figures. The motor rifle company. Well, let's there you open go. it and have a look. Boom. <laughs> oh. Top loading. Lovely artwork of tanks at point blank range, man. I would not pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah. So you get a sort of tap ass arrangement going on there. Let's get these bad so, out of the way just are you so we pushing, can get the, pushing my pal of painted get Soviet out tanks of the out of the way. All right, it's going to take us a minute to sort this out into the assorted pals because uh, it's all a bit jumbled up, isn't it? So we'll be right back. There's stuff everywhere now. Oh my days. All right, so this is a starter set. These, to the best of my knowledge, retail for £50. This all this for fifty quid. All this for fifty quid. Wait, that's yeah. a win. Um, yes. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen vehicles. Seventeen vehicles. And two four platoons. infantry sprues or two infantry sprues. Yeah. Um, you also naturally get your A5 rule book, quick start guide, unit cards, and twenty dice, which I neglected to say initially. Do. Good dice. Uh, they're, they're serviceable not, dice. They're not cracker, cracker dice. dice, and they are coloured. They do make other versions of these with like hammers the and actual, sickles and, right. and Vulcan crosses and stuff on. Uh, but these are nice dice, especially, you know, you get a few of these sets, you're going to have loads of these. Yeah, again, uh, if you're not started yet, yeah, you and, know, you're good to go. Absolutely. And, and, it, and it themes you, even if you've already got dice, you maybe not have grey ones when you're playing your Germans. Or, yeah, red ones with the yellow so You get your, your rule book, which Teach is always good. Give book. it to a friend or get a friend. If you haven't got one you of those already. haven't got a friend, get a friend. Yeah. Unit cards, bonus. I'll take those. <laughs> and then we'll look at those in a bit. And then we'll look at those. Bases. We'll look, at, look at the sprues. For all of your infantry needs. Indeed. Which you do get some of. Where do you want to start? Show me the paper, John. Show me the we'll paper. The sprues. Assembling your German Panzer Battle Orb. Oh my. So although you get the big colour one in the starter army, is in these starter sets you get this kind of custom made one. Boom. And what's nice about it is, especially when you look at the infantry. Sovietsky. Yes. Is it breaks down what each of the models are. Yes. Can via the medium of uh, shapes and... <laughs> shapes and colours. <laughs> and colours. Colours in black and white, that is. I can tell you and hollow that a square is a rifleman. Yes. And there's quite a lot of those. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So you know what's what. And you also get... Now, actually, I have never used this. This is their, like, rules in brief. Uh, okay. To yeah, sort of cool take rules. Through the beginning cool game. Rules. I've never tried to play with these because I guess I'd watched a lot of videos before I started playing. Shall we try it? Maybe we should one day we should play a game. Just like Just here we like go. This is what we're learning this to play is the experience. Yeah, but it certainly explains the principal rules. I have had a look at it. it. 
I just don't know what's missing. And until you play through it, you don't know <laughs> what isn't there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Even when we have um, played through. But it's going to get you your first kind of heart, first first out of the box yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. If you're new, 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 um, new to it. And they tend to only come in these starter sets. Right. So what the ladies oh. at home want to know, John? Is they want to know in the doofers. What's in the doofers? So these are from. So you get these army cards. These are from the Berlin, oh, yeah, Berlin Soviet period. So this is a Berlin Soviet force, and this is a Berlin German force. Um, so on the inside, you get all of your support options specific to mm. those particular books. And um, I'm really grateful. I don't know if you noticed this. They put the card numbers in. Have they done that? Uh, LS two one four. Yeah. They put the card oh. numbers in because by this period, by this point, there's lots of so different many. cards that say Panther. Yeah. Yep. And it's about which Panther card is it that I'm looking for here. So that's a really nice inclusion. Um, so should we look at the... Do you want to do the Soviets or the Germans first, John? Uh, let's do... What's at the top there? We've got Germans. Let's Germans. Germans? Okay. Germans. Plus they're on your side. Plus they're on my side. Let's find the headquarters. So Boom. I'm telling you. So if you've already seen our Battle for Berlin German Army start set... Mm. Starter Army, that's a tank training company, and those yes. guys are rookies. Yes. This Fresh meat. is Kampfgruppe Clausewitz, which oh, yeah. is west of Berlin, and I believe not long, it, it's one of the forces that tries to relieve Berlin, tries to make a breakthrough, fails. But these are not rookies. They're not veterans necessarily. Well, they're veterans, but they're not crack troops. Right. So they're, the, they're, you know, those kind of veterans that they've been shot up a bit already. So yeah. they're not stupid anymore. Yeah, yeah. They're, those, Mid the middle they're those kind of veterans. Okay. As opposed to, like, highly motivated veterans, they're sensible. So if you look at the stats on this, it's telling you about the Panther Battalion. You get a reluctant five up for motivation. Okay, and that, that's the whole, we've been shot at before. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're cool yeah, with that. We'll, absolutely. We'll we've hang back. <laughs> we, we, yeah, these guys were probably in France yeah, at not, some point. Not and they're now, no, they're not. Not going to rush you know. in. Um, they've got the veteran skill rating, though, so they're, you know, for their uh, orders and so okay. forth. Got and they're careful. They hit on four up. Cool. Panther herself has got 10 front armor, which is a very respectable number against Western allies. But mm. when we look at the Soviets... Oh, I dread to think. They get bigger numbers think, than that. Yeah. They get bigger numbers than that. Um, so in this battle group, uh, you can have... You have to take the headquarters, which can be one or two Panthers, for nine or 18 points. So they're a bit cheaper because of that that reluctance yes. thing, yeah? They're, they're not they're not hugely expensive. And then you have to have two to three tank platoons, uh, battle group tank platoons, which can be the Panzer IV 70s, the Stug Assault Guns, the Panzer IVs, or the Clausewitz Tiger Tank Platoon. You can then have a, a Hetzer Tank Platoon and another Battle Group Escort Platoon. So this formation is quite unusual mm. because it's a 1945 and it's a it's a Kampf Group. So do you know what a Kampf Group is, John? Um, it's a it's a group of of people that like to go camping at weekends, I believe. It's sort of that. Um, it, it is a German doctrinal idea that's probably we tend to like think of it in really glamorous terms as war gamers. The idea right. of camp group is these are the things you will need to complete this mission. You stick them under a guy. Probably this guy almost certainly was called Clausewitz. So it's camp group Clausewitz. So and you give him all of the assets that he needs to go and complete that mission. So it, so it can be a mixture from across the larger formation. It's not just going to be a Panzer battalion. It's probably a Panzer company, some infantry companies, some artillery, a bit of whatever you need to go and do that. It's a mini sort of tactical. Yeah, yeah, army. And, and 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 in a lot of ways, it's very modern. And that's when it's good. The reality of a lot of the camp groups, though, is they're made during battle. And what they really are is, as units start to disintegrate, <laughs> you pick a dude who's in charge and say, you right, take over these bits and do that. Right, so it's not a case of these are really well thought out. It isn't necessarily out. what you needed, it's what there is. Right, what's left, here you go. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so I think, you know... Especially at this part of the war, right? Especially at this part of the war. But yeah, so that camp group Clausewitz, when it's making its counter-attack, I'm sure it, it, it is in, it's in fairly good condition mm. for a 1945 German formation. Yeah. But you see a lot of these... A, a, a kind of a 
bodge together during battle. And, and that's probably a reflection that we have to go down to that size because there aren't panzer armies anymore. No. The number of panzers in a panzer division is tiny. At three. <laughs> well, probably <laughs> panzer like division of three. 30 or 40 maybe rather but than 150 not, yeah. or, or the early war ones, Big two, numbers. 300. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, then they're not what they were. It's mm. not it's not necessarily it's not just because they're tactical wizards. It's often more military expediency than anything else. Right. But anyway, so that's that and that's so you get you one of your Panthers. So that's it. One of the Panthers is taken up by Mr. Klauschwitz. And you've seen this before. This is the late Panther Sprue. Yep. Uh, which has got the option to build for people who are buying this set who are already collectors does have the option to build the whatever this is called the Yank Panther Yank Panther thank you John uh, brain was empty there was obviously in this list you're not going to get stats for that but that's nice. that's what it is uh, this is one of their older kits yes um, but it builds up fairly nicely. The only Still thing, serviceable, is it not? Absolutely. Looks absolutely. good to me. Please forgive some of the paint. These are, these are part painted. Yeah. I've got one of these sets, and we're going to play a battle with it. And we put a link to that out Ooh. for you at some point. But they're not quite ready yet, and we haven't played the battle yet. Yeah. Um, the most tricky part of it is the bow machine gun. Right. We've, we've, because, we've, we've talked about we this. Every time it, yeah. we look at this kit, we talk about that. Yeah. The bow machine gun. There's, there's two options. There's one on the track sprue here. That's quite difficult to get out. There is one that's easier to get out on the main sprue. And that's because of the uh, clippy uh, point. Yeah, and because it's such a thin piece of equipment. And what it is, is you, because you've got this, this kind of ball mount that it's in with it coming out of, it's very difficult for them to put it in, yeah. in a better way for yeah. you to get it out. Yeah. Yep, oh well. And if they didn't have sprue gate attaching it, at the barrel end, the barrel will probably snap off in yeah, transport. Yeah, before, so just... You know, it's 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 a tough one there. Do but what you, you can. You have got a total of three bow machine so guns. So you should be able to get one of them out. You should be able to get one of them out. So you get the, one of those for the HQ. But then we've also got some more Panthers right in a little... Yes, so then it's in the Panther Lake Battle Group. So these you can take as two, three or four, but there's two in here. Two more. Um, for nine points each, basically. Okay. Two, three or four. Uh, they still have the Stormtrooper rule. They have the same stats, veterans, careful and reluctant. Um, they've got that cracking high-velocity 75mm gun, which has got oh. 14 anti-tank power, 3-up oh. firepower and 40 inches of range. Uh, crosses on a 2+, plus. Panther is a glorious a solid tank. tank. Yeah, and a 9-point Panther I think is all right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't compare it to the other points, but it, it seems like we've got cheap Panthers, yeah. which are useless, <laughs> but they're not. Um, these sort of middle ground panthers, which yeah. are okay, and then the super elite ones. That's and then good. Yeah. you got all the cards, as you say. You got all the range, yeah. Um, so you, you're going to find those kind of stats are common throughout this camp group, clouds of bits. That motivation. That I'm trying to think. I think you use that mostly in melee and for your, your last stand as well. Motivation. Oh. So putting these in a two tank unit is quite iffy. Yeah, that's motivation, man. That's motivation. Um, yeah. That's really not. So you so want good. to stay near to your HQ, yeah? Because you might cheese it otherwise. Because there are two man units. He's quite reluctant too, but you get nobody that. can give them a reroll. Yeah. Oh dear. Right. Yeah. Well. So there's a fragility to to these units, which is good. Which is good. And this is to learn the game. So you want yeah. to be experiencing yeah. those That's mechanics, fair. right? Okay. Go Panzer four L seventy. Boosh. There we go. So this. Uh, I would call this a Jagdpanzer. I, uh, it's, uh, I don't know why it's called a Panzer 4L70, because it's not a turreted tank. Is it solely just because of the chassis? It must be. But it's the Jagdpanzer. But there are Stug 4s which are on Panzer 4s. They're, oh. they're very rare, though. So I, I, I don't what really know why it ends up with that name. Um, so I've just built a couple of these. These were nice, easy kits to make. I yeah. was surprised at how easy they were. Anything that's got skirts on, I worry how they mount. Yes. But they went together quite well. Sometimes. And so much of this vehicle is moulded on the upper hull. Perfect. Very nice. The gun lock was a little bit fizzy. Right down to, it's got a couple spare wheels on the back, but it's built them, it's, they've, on the sprue, they're plugged. Oh, they're together? Into two little holes that fit in the hull. Oh. So they're really easy to fit. It's not like a fiddly, tiny little thing. It ends cool. up being quite a big piece. But yeah, it's a, it's a really nice looking vehicle for the late war. And it has Flat. these 
these uh, the sort of sides of the armor you can see as they go over the engine deck at the back and there's a, yeah like they're a, extra little pieces plate. and again i thought that they would incline to slip but no but no no they fitted this curve in there is a perfect fit it's a wow. perfect fit, and the angle's just right where there's just a little bit of um, a line on the underside, catches the upper deck just right. I thought they would be fiddly to line up. You know, because you're putting them in at an angle, you're yeah, resting normally them any, on the hull. Uh, any separate angled armour plates normally just slip <laughs> off, or they don't yeah. quite join with the yeah. next piece, and you end up with a weird... They've done a really good job with that, because it's an integral part of the look. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, and it fits really well. When was that? 2020 it's, kit, oh, it's okay, another, so it's, yeah. Yeah, this is another one. As late as I thought. Uh, so that's also part of the formation. Before. Cool, so we've got two of those. Last vehicle, I don't think anyone expected to see this in a starter oh. on the Yag Tiger. So surely this is like the last one ever, <laughs> right? Well, there aren't many of them, obviously. There can't be many left. Because uh, this is on it, This the Yag Tiger is on a King Tiger hull. It's not on a Tiger hull. It's... It's on a King Tiger hull. Oosh. This is one of these like pet projects of, it, clearly it's too big. It's mad. <laughs> um, and we didn't say about the Panzer 4L70. What's good about that um, was that it's got that high velocity uh, 70, uh, 75 mil gun. So it's got 14 anti-tank power like Panther. Okay, so it's, it's the same it's, but different. Yeah, it's a very powerful gun. Why yeah. is that? Well, no, that's that's what they've done. That's what it's they just, designed this to do, like, to fit that gun metal. in it. Less. Yeah. And this we don't need a turret. Same gun as Panther, but a lot less tank. <laughs> 14 points for the two as well. Yeah. So Yag Tiger is 16 points for one. Ouch. Like one for two if you finally get hold of another one. So Yag Tiger has got a much more um, uh, spread of its stats. So it's it's confident for its motivation, but because it's got it's a self-propelled gun, its counter-attack value is low, but because... Um, it's got the third right last stand rating, gives it a three up last stand. Oh my. So it's, it's, it's better than most of the others. Yeah. And again, it's set on four careful. It's got seven. Oh my days. Front armor. Is there even a gun that could get through that? Well, it's still only eight on the side. Still. Uh, that gun has got a 48 inch range, a halted rate of fire of two, an anti tank power of 18, and a firepower of two up. Uh, it's brutal forward firing and slow firing. So brutal is the um, infantry have to re-roll successful saves. Mm. Forward firing is you can only fire in the front arc. Slow firing means uh, if you fire on the move, you're one worse to hit. To hit. Okay, but this isn't going to be moving anywhere. Let's face it. No. Um, Park it in a bush. With a with a skill rating of three up, then it, you might blitz it around a little bit. Because then you don't count as moving. Blitzing that Hulk of metal around. You can blitz that Hulk of metal around. Wow. Yeah. You can not only you can blitz fire and then do the sneak and peek move, whatever, shoot and scoot, whatever it's called. Because you can do two shoot, movement scoot. orders because of the yeah blitz and doofer. Now, undeniably, that is a mega weapon. That is a super mega, like, modern, like they've sent it back from the future. But you have only got six tanks in this force. Uh, yeah. That's all right. You to got, fight all of them Russians. you got some dudes. They'll, um, they'll do. So right. you need to position it well. The 17 front armor, 8 on the side, you need to not get hit in the side. Just get these other ones and park them. <laughs> oh, right, as, as a blative armor and for then, the side. Yeah, and then, you know, a couple of panthers at the back. Mm. That's fine. You're yeah. good. You're good to go. And then last up, you get the Panzer Grenadier platoon. Um, and none, so they're not integral, I don't think. Can you take infantry in the... Where was the HQ card? Uh, this is the one with the... Yeah. They yeah, they're not integral. Oh. The infantry and the, and the Yag Tiger are separate. So you're running... You're running, what, five tanks with the reluctant motivation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Your late Panzer Grenadiers are uh, 9 or 12 points, depending on when you have 5 or 7 teams. Um, you can give them assault rifles for an extra point, and the assault rifle gives you an extra moving rate of fire. Okay. So that's the STG 44. Yeah. Um, they're careful. They've got an infantry save of 3 up. They're confident, and they're veteran. So your infantry are good. They are good. Your infantry are good. Um, they've got the uh, limited two for Panzerfaust, 
so I'm going to shoot it twice. And the limited five... What's that? Limited five, that's how many... When you fire your assault rifles, you can only count five bases as having assault rifles. So if you've got the seven bases, two of them will fire as rifles. Oh, okay. It's an, uh, that still seems pretty generous. Just representing the limited amount that there'd be, or... Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, although, you know, I think six figures were made, but this is an army of many millions. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so the distribution <laughs> is yeah. going to be... Uh, the distribution yeah. is, still, is still limited. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the Germans. That's your Germans. I like the German force because I think it's very strong, but it's very brittle. Your Jag Tiger is terrible in the side. Your infantry are all right, but your entire force morale is quite weak. Yeah, you've got some very capable Because you've got three here. units. Yeah, which are reluctant. Which are reluctant. So, you, you know, uh, yeah. For the starter box game, experience. Yeah, absolutely, yes. the out-the-box the out the experience, uh, which, is sure. which is interesting. It's going to play different. Yeah, I want to see that. And I yeah. think I think you want to you see that. Berlin, Soviets, next. So you're going to get a T-34 forward detachment. Now, it's an interesting formation, and I've seen this on um, some of the other ones, is you have the option to swap this headquarters card. Now, you don't have cards in this box, but as you expand out... Yeah. ...for an infantry HQ. No! Oh. You don't have to have the sort of battalion commander or the company commander pootling around in a tank. You can have guys on foot, but still otherwise be the same formation. Okay. Um, but in this box, it's expecting you to build one T-34. Okay. And the T-34 uh, I built, to, just to make it different, was, forgive, the, these are only part painted. So um, I've done most of the work on the tank, but the crew figures, their faces and helmets oh, and stuff. Oh, they look good enough. Yeah. Um, Moonlit. Yeah. So the T-34, I built my commander as a t-34 76 rather than 85 which is the earlier version right this card allows you to do either so that's three points but it's five that, that little dude there that little dude there yeah yeah mm. it's a single t-34 that's probably never going to do anything can hide it so <laughs> it's it's three points for that version whereas it's five points for the up one mm. and when i mainly want my commander to command yeah, it's a lot survive. of points. Yeah, so T thirty four compared to all that German stuff that we've seen, so the T thirty four is aggressive on a three up. Okay, it's still confident motivation and it's trained, but the Soviets in this game have got the crafty rule, or some of them have, which means they are tactics of a three up. So they're kind of you know maneuver rolls and so forth. Three plus. That's different. Yeah, and um, the gun on it though. The 76 mils, only got an anti-tank power of nine. Oh, boo. Which isn't going through pretty much anything <laughs> on that German roster. Oh. Firepower three up and is overworked oh. because it's a small turret. But it's all right. Whereas the 85 has got the anti-tank power of 12, loses the overwork rule. That's reasonable. Proper size yeah. turret. Yeah. Um, so that's your HQ. Sprue-wise, the T-34, you haven't built one of these, have you, John? No, no. So this is one of their older kits, and this is... When you see things like this, you can see how much they have learned. Oh my, 2012. This is, it's not a terrible kit, but compared to what you get now in the main, they're definitely, I don't think they would do it this way again. Yep. There's, I'm seeing a lot of components here, which are likely molded on the newer versions. So this sprue, I think this is a little bit like you get with the, the Panther, is this sprue is common to several vehicles. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Whereas the the other part of the sprue isn't, and so you can see four different guns on there at least, multiple hatch types. Yep. Yeah. What you might not recognise different track guards is the Mud track flaps. guards. And if there is a problem with this kit, if we go back to looking at the upper hull, is the track guards are not attached. You. So, <laughs> so much like every other Flames of War tank that you're going to build, you assemble the lower hull, you place the upper hull on it. And then you then you do the turret and assembly, and then you maybe add add the you know finesse the details on. But with this one, you've got track guards to fit, and they're fitting. They've got to kind of support their weight in the air. Yeah, they're not really resting on anything to some extent. Um, and there are two different types of track guards. Yeah, one's rounded, one's slightly and more one's angled. a bit more angular. Um, and it's a lot of faff for what it is. Yep. 
it, it, it really is a lot of faff for what it is. But this is then, this is early days, right? This so is very it's early It's giving you the options to have whatever whatever Absolutely. the difference is between those angled mud flats. Absolutely, um, yeah. No, it's, it certainly is giving you a lot of options. A lot of options, but yeah, as you say, for, for yeah. a gaming piece, perhaps a bit too fiddly. A bit too fiddly, yeah. Uh, but other than that, you know, like your tracks are keyed, so you can't put them on the wrong way around. Woo! Uh, you get two complete upper turrets. Yes. Da, 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 complete, da, da. complete with turret pegs. So that's great. And it does build up as a nice model. Yeah. But it does it does have just a lot of these kind of accessories, which I think they would either leave off or mould on the upper yeah, hole. Yeah, but now, now. But that's come with experience, right? Exactly. This is 2012, very early. But four of them in there. You could build four T3485s. You could build four T3476s. Or more importantly, you could build both versions. Because it's just a turret swap. Well, that's a bonus. So you're going to have a company of T3485s. You're going to have three of them. That would be worth 13 points if you weren't just playing straight out of the box. And as you said, it's got front armour of six, side armour of five, and top armour of one. It's aggressive, trained, confident. And that 85mm gun has got an anti-tank power of 12, which is necessary for facing these German vehicles, so just which have got standard. 9 and 10 as front armour, and 17, obviously. Ooh, armour plus dice. Still not massive punch power, is it, no. when you consider? No. But what you need to remember about T-34 is it's the most widely produced tank of World War II. Yeah, there's so like, I don't there's know. plenty of them. I can't remember the numbers. 50,000, 70,000. There's just enormous numbers of them have been manufactured. One of these shells is going to get through. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and there are just so many more Russian tanks than there are German ones. Mm. Um, which you are going to feel in playing this game. And the Russians even get big ones. So the ISU-122 then is next. Is that this terrifying square thing? That is the big terrifying square thing. Stick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you get kits to make two of these, which would be 13 points. Interestingly, for an extra point, you can equip the whole unit, no matter how many you have, with the anti-aircraft machine guns. It's an, it's an option. Okay. It's a, it's a whole unit upgrade. Right. And it gives them the self-defense AA role. So this is part of the Soviet doctrine um, of direct fire HE. They have lots of this in their force. That That's not an anti-tank gun. That's an anti-infantry gun. Oh my. All right. Uh, that's going to fire a HE shell. Uh, and it can actually fire as artillery. So it's again like the other Soviet stuff. It's aggressive. It's confident. It's trained. It's got some other uh, modifiers within that being a self-propelled gun. Still moves perfectly well. It's got a tactical move of 10 inches and a road dash of 20. Okay. It can cross obstacles on a three, so it's not like terrible mobility. No. It's part of it. Uh, but, the, but the main thing is the gun, right? So a bit like the German 88 and a number of other artillery pieces, indirect fire, it still hurts because it's a big shell. Yeah, man. It's a 122 millimeter shell. Uh, so it does, if you fire it direct, 28 inch range, 14 anti-tank power and two up five power. It is brutal, and it is slow firing, and it is forward firing. So there's lots of reasons not to do it. But you can use it as a tank, is what I'm saying. Or you can choose to fire it as artillery, in which case it has a three-up firepower and a three anti-tank power. In the starter game, you probably don't need to fire it as artillery, but you might, because if the Germans dig in their infantry, yeah. they can be very difficult to hit and therefore to dislodge. But two guns? Two gun battery isn't great, but being brutal, once you start if you repeat, hit, one, if you, when you start hit. bombarding, you will start knocking them out. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely worth doing, uh, I think. It, and the anti-aircraft machine gun, without that, it doesn't have any machine guns at all, actually. So it gives it machine guns and the self-defense hair roll. Boom. Beastie. Slightly newer kit, 2015. Yeah, so this shares a common sprue with the IS-2. The, the lower hull and the this, tracks. This thing here, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get to the IS-2 in yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just um, checking. So that's that. Okay. Like a lot of the Russian vehicles, you get lots of additional fuel tanks. You see on Soviet, lots of Soviet vehicles have I've got external fuel tanks. It barrels, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, everywhere, yeah. I just think I think it's because they've just got a lot of distance to cover. 
Yeah. They come from a place that's big, where everything is far away. Yeah. So just psychologically, makes sense we're going to need a lot of fuel to get anywhere. Yeah. Um, not just jerry cans on the outside, but whole drums of fuel oh. on the outside of many of their vehicles. And the later ones seem to have more. Blimey. Um, so this part goes together very, very easily. I like this kit a lot. And then you just slot. Just uh, plop. Just plop that huge upper hole plate onto it and stick in the correct gun. Get the beastie gun and flop it in. And the 122 is the longer of those guns. The 150 is shorter, I think. Yeah. With a little Which is, sort there of is a break thing. Yeah, because this is a dual kit. It mm. will make the ISU one, is it 152? It makes another one of the other different. The other big uh, self propelled guns Beasties. that they have. A pair of those. Lovely kits to build. Very easy. And a satisfyingly huge model. They with a are huge terrifyingly gun. big. And which you can still use in direct fire. But equally big. Equally big is the IS-2. IS-2, JS-2, depends which planet you come from. The Josef Stalin tank. Um, so this is careful. So they've got the pros in here. Oh, the pros this are involved. This is hit on fours, yeah. rather. Because this is a Hero Guards tank company. Okay. Yeah. So that whereas the others are just... Oh, no, they're Hero Tank companies as well. Uh, but this is Hero Guards. It's like all the special words. Heroes and Guards. Superhero Guard Company. As a unit, you can take it as two or three. They're 12 points a model, it seems. You can add bed spring armor. They sell an upgrade pack to put these plastic bed springs. So you know a bit like shirts and that the Germans have. Yeah, like the ablative sort of like just metal sheets. Yeah. Yeah. So the Soviets did this with the old bedsteads. Oh, it stuck so to the say, outside of the turret. When you say bed spring armor, it's not like a uh, crazy new design pattern. Thing. No, no, no. It's no. literally bed springs. It's literally bed springs. Okay, that sounds. Adequately Soviet. <laughs> so if you take bed spring armor, um, if it fails a side armor save against a weapon with a firepower of five up or a six, roll a five plus to ignore the hit. So it gives you an additional save against infantry anti-tank weapons. Slightly lighter, yeah. Because the, the, fi the firepower five up is like the anti-tank rifle and the Panzerfaust, Panzer Shrek. That's their, their okay. kind of number. Right. So it gives you a bonus save against those inside. Now, when you're paying 12 points a tank, that, that might be worth having. How many points is it, actually? It's one point. Yeah, man. I'd Go for it. it. But I Go don't want it. just bed springs. I want full mattresses. You want full mattresses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to burn them off first. No, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so it's got 11 front armour. Okay. So that's, that's a problem for these What's German tanks. What's coming out of though, yeah. Well, there were 14s. 14, 14, and 14. So it's plus three over 18. the armour already. Yeah. So a three is going to ping you. Yeah. And a four is going to go and through. Four. Yeah, at, at under 16 inches. So you've got a 28 inch range and 14 anti tank power, two up firing. It's brutal and it's slow firing because it's two part ammunition. It's a oh. big shell. Yeah. Um, so, but it's fearless on a three up and it's got assault tank counter attacks on a two up. So this, provided you could deal with the in, the um, infantry anti tank weapons, this wasn't a bad assault tank. But it is expensive yeah. to be taking Panzerfaust in the face at 12 <laughs> points a model. Mate, you've got bed springs. And you've, only got, and you've only got two of them. But I find it's quite interesting is the morale of the Soviet army is better than the morale because the Germans were mostly reluctant. Well... And these guys are mostly fearless. They just want to get the job done now, right? Because um, normally it's a problem with the Russian army is you don't want to have small units because your morale is really, really fragile. The way morale works in Flames was you don't test until you're down to the last vehicle. So you vehicle. just have the swarm armies, right? Yes, yeah, so you go for the units of 10 models because you don't test until they're all gone. But IS-2... So the problem I have with IS-2 is, is to find a role for it. The gun isn't is it so big that it terrifies the Germans and it's slow firing and it's only one shot. Yeah. Compared to the standard sort of T thirty four. Oh, it's definitely 85. better than the T thirty four eighty five. But it's not it's not terrifying to the Germans because no, of the because of the low volume 12. of fire for the points. Yeah. I mean I think its best job is bullet magnet. Just have a pair of, well, not even a pair of them, right? Just, just have, have some, just I think, have, yeah, I think you do want to wobble them down the tip. They're too expensive to leave at the back taking one shot a turn. Yeah, they're not incapable, but they're just not... 
Mm. Ah, that's a tricky one. It is, it is. And, I, and I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. I mean, if you don't have high power anti tank weapons, they're a terrible problem. But a late war German army is likely to have those. Well, that's the war gamer's choice, isn't it? In reality, it's just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. hey, Boris, sorry, mate, but you're stuck with the IS2s. Do with them what you can, I guess. But they're lovely big models. Yeah. They these, are lovely uh, big models. And um, so again, scary. to build them, had a look, it's it's not really any more complicated. Uh, it had that common the common the common sprue we mentioned half. before from the bottom half. The top half, you've got two upper holes. Are there gonna be minor differences? There or? are minor differences, and I can't for the life of me remember which was which, because there's an IS2 and there's an IS85. Right. But the um I think I think that's right. And the IS eighty five, there weren't very many of them made at all. Um, so which ones which of these holes? They look almost I did look identical. on their I did, I did look on their website. I don't remember not being able to find out, but I am I am now wondering whether I whether I did what the, what even the difference was because there's definitely two there. Yeah. Anyway, who knows? <laughs> who Somebody knows? does. I, I, I looked at their spotlight page. Yeah, I'm gonna have a look. Yeah. Not for any real purpose, but yeah, <laughs> it looks exactly the same. Yeah, there's there's this a slight is difference. Very slightly different. Oh, no, that's a slopey same. bit. That's got a f so that I think that might be one of the only differences. Yeah, is relevant. BA sixty four armored car company. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Boom, boom. <laughs> so these are three points for the three models that you get, and you have the option to switch switch out the um, the MG. And it's literally the D, it's the DP, you know, the man portable drum fed no way. machine gun Just that the infantry, the LMG. The yeah. Yeah, it's not even a belt fed machine gun. It is a standard light machine gun that they've got in the turret of that thing. This dude looks uncomfortable, man. <laughs> he looks very uncomfortable. He's like, I am not suitably like, well equipped. I'm not quite. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, you do have the option to swap it out for a PTRD, which, which is, is the anti tank rifle. Literally all just like infantry weapons <laughs> slapped. It, it, 1941 between. infantry weapons. Oh my, that. yeah. Yeah. Um, and it costs you three points for this unit. So uh, yeah, up to two of them can be swapped for PTRDs. Uh, I modelled one with a PTRD yep. and that was mainly so I could say which one was the HQ vehicle. Because Yeah, he's the lead. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's the got leader. a slightly longer gun. Because uh, that does affect the model placement and so forth. Yeah. Leader. They're here on fours, not threes. So they're not just going to burst. Uh, they're fearless and they're veteran, but they've got deficits to that, so counterattack is worse, assault is worse because they're scout vehicles. Yeah. It's got one front armor, one right. side Better armor, than none, no top armor. Tactical move is only eight, it's wheeled, so off road, it's not great. Cross is five plus, don't put them anywhere, they don't want to go. And the machine guns have got a halted and moving rate of fire of two. The PTRD, however, you can take a shot with anti tank power of five. A mighty five. And the side armor of every single one of these vehicles is better than that. There you go. Okay. So there you go. Mm. There's a four on the Panzer IV, 70, but you get a dice. Ah. So, so it's got a one in you six. you can roll a five. And yeah, and then, and then possibly, it's possibly bail. Yeah, possibly. Po possibly bail. <laughs> That isn't why you take them. No, surely they give you if advanced you, If you're new, they give you the spearhead. Spearhead! Weapon. And that is going to allow you to bring your big stuff up table. The unit can move before the game to expand the deployment area. And That's they can right. move eight inches. So, in the deployment, you deploy them, you then move them, and they have then expanded your deployment area as you put other units down. It's an incredibly powerful role. I'm, I'm delighted that they've put it in the start set because it's something that like maybe you play it once, then the second time you play with the start set, you're like, oh, well, let's try this yeah, now and see how that the, changes. It's a thing. You've got, you've got areas to go. Me, me. The kit is a new one. I don't know if you've seen the BS64 kit. It is plastic. This is 2020. 2020. And like a lot of their smaller vehicles, they're made in three parts. It's mm -hmm. quite clever. I thought with this that I had to glue the sides to the top. Right. But actually, you if you the see together. the bottom, see, look at both bottom pieces. Yeah. They actually lock together. Yep. So you lock together the two lower pieces. Bloop. This is like, learn from me what I learned by building one. Lock the bottom, bottom two pieces together and then Just glue the, uh, the, the upper pop hole the top on. to that. Yeah. Now, the turrets in this... Yep. 
the turret pegs are very, very tight. So what happens in the turret is you have a, a kind of a, a circle that the turret peg goes into. Mm -hmm. And the turret peg will fit in there. You'll need to file it down where you've cut it off and so forth to fit in. But it will fit in there with a little bit, you know, put a dab of plastic glue on. But I found that then when I put them into the actual socket on the hull, it was very tight. And every time I took the hull off, it left the peg behind. Yeah. And turning them is very, very tricksy. So with the third one that I built, I didn't put the turret peg in. Just I just relied. glued it on. Uh, no, I didn't even glue it on because th there is a, a, it is socketed without the peg. Oh, right. The peg is just a yeah, you don't a, need a, the peg a, a, a deep to socket, get even further, okay. as it were. Yeah, but uh, after yeah, once they've got some paint on them, they're incredibly yeah. tight yeah. and quite fragile. Um, so I don't think you need to do that. No, me me. So that's the that's the possible. That's the you get some infantry as well. Do get. Not any infantry, but hero guards. Hero guards! Uh, so for 8 and 12 points. Now the great thing about the Soviet ones is they come with commissars. So you get a special dude with like a megaphone who gives you a I special role. Like as long as he's still alive. That's mine so are built, but not primed yet. So I've built them and I've based them. Um, are getting ready to paint, so... Um, but they're lovely, the, the hard plastic infantry you've seen yep. before. Um, there he is. There's the commissar. Get over there! He's got yeah. a megaphone, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, instructions in the black and white printed sheet that they gave yes. you. Shows you, you know, how to... Tells you who's who. Who's who and what's, what's going on what base. The Soviet infantry is a bit more complicated. As well as having a commander base, which is a three-man team, you have the commissar base, which is a two-man team. And yes. he essentially gives you a plus one to motivation as long as he's alive. You get this special sort of blue column Oosh. on the stats. Um, DPMG teams, Maxim HM teams as well. HMG teams, that's cool. Yes. Um, you're going to have a few models left over, um, it, like with the German infantry when you've built these. Mm. Uh, so when you get another set, you can probably start looking towards having an infantry formation. Wonderful. All right. Well, there you go. That's a pretty solid starter kit. As a starter set, what do you think, John? I mean, look, you get... The Germans are going to lose horribly, so that's good because I they're all terrified. I think they are. They're all terrified and they're all a bit reluctant now at this stage of the war. And I've got mega guns and big tanks. Mm. So uh, so the Germans don't you. die very easily. No, they've got good kit. They've got solid armour, but... They've got good armour and they're hit on fours in most cases. And the Soviets have generally got some kind of penalty to shooting. Whether it's because they're overworked or they only get one <laughs> shot around anyway. Um, or they have a fairly low chance of penetration. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as you start knocking these German vehicles yeah, out, they're going to have big problems. Yeah, if you can. I'm trying to think of the weak spot there. Maybe these things, maybe. Who knows? But yeah, you get plenty of sprue. You get loads of infantry. It's a nice, yes. uh, a nice mix. If you're playing as a rookie... Straight. I would ignore force morale for your first game. Just get used to the mechanics. Just get used to the mechanics. How stuff moves. Yeah, because I know we've talked about it a bit because I think it's one of the it things that important. really makes this... It is very important later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, because I think it might it might paralyse you a little bit. I, I would I would look forward to playing this game as the yes. Germans to know how cagey I'm going to have to be. Yeah, for sure. Because um, you could actually might eliminate not. this formation by destroying two vehicles. Yeah, but... As you've already said, that might be tricky. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. so absolutely, it might just be absolutely. instead of a clash of steel, more like a a bump of two pieces of steel. And we roll dice. Luck changes yes. things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Luck changes everything. Your thoughts on it as a starter set, John? What 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 do you reckon? Maybe compared to some of the other starter sets, what what's your feeling? I mean, about it's it? comparable, isn't it? Of of all the others, you get nice amount of vehicles, which I absolutely love, and they're all big, tasty tanks as well. They're all big, aren't Plus, they? Plus, you get the me me the BA sixty fours or whatever they're called. Yeah, you get infantry, so you've got a nice mix, and you get to play with everything. If this is like my first dip, my toe into Flames of War, mm. I can play with all the bits. Yeah, all the yeah. components of the game. So. Yeah, I think that's a pretty solid start. I mean, yourself? I mean, 
I think for, for starting players, I think it's good because you're seeing lots of different rules. So I think you'll play it and then you'll realise this, this is deeper than I thought. Yes. When you come back to it next yeah. time, maybe you'll take up the spearhead rule in your second game, you know, and then you'll start thinking as you expand out, oh, this forced morale thing is, is, is quite interesting. It is, it is a key it's going to change component. the way. But I also think in, in, terms of, in terms of your ability to expand on this collection, mm. I think is really good because you can, you can take the way that Flames of War formations work, they're usually based around one principal vehicle. Yes. So you take this force that you've already got and you go away and buy another a T-34 box and you can then expand that force in that direction. Yeah. If you like the T-34s... And the T-34 is a T-34. It doesn't specifically have to be this card T-34. No. It can be a different uh, you Absolutely. Know, part of the war, whatever. Absolutely. If you wanted to develop this into being more Panther heavy, um, and, and then you can look at other eras or yes. other battle groups using the same forces with very different kind of stats. I mean, these German tanks are, are that in their normal form, in their 1944 stats, are much more expensive in points. And more of them. Be- well, I say more of them. Not because of the <laughs> points, but... Yeah. 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 So, you know, they're, they're, they're quite interesting forces to compare to one another. Um, yeah. I think, I think it's good. I think it's very good indeed. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Sweet. It should provide people with an interesting first few games from which to develop their uh, Flames of War experience. Their career. <laughs> <laughs> their career. All right, guys. That's enough from us. Thanks Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye. Hello. If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.